As a student with learning disabilities, I honestly was really unsure about how successful I was gonna be in college. And one of the main reasons, people are ask, always ask me, Viva, why would you go from California all the way to Massachusetts? It's cold, <laughs> it's, you know, it's gonna snow. And I say because of PAL. Programs like PAL have helped people just like me with learning disabilities who never thought they'd be able to go to college or if they went to college, they'd probably fail, be really successful. Um, Curry has been amazing for me and PAL has been really fantastic to, for me. It's helped me be so successful. I'm graduating in three years um, with a GPA well over a 3.5 and I'm very excited. So some of the apps that have helped me get to where I am and be so successful in class um, have been apps like Notability. So I'm going to open up Notability. So this is what Notability looks like. Um, one of the reasons I love Notability because of the organization aspect that you can have with it. You can have folders and then within folders, you can have subjects. Um, so I do one for every semester and you can see I've been doing this for over a year now. So spring 2022 is what I'm currently in, but I'm actually gonna go back into there it is, fall 2021, so just last semester. And I am going to go over some of my favorite slides. So what I'm going to demonstrate is how I get slides, how I use slides, why I like using the professor slides to take notes. Um, how these slides are accessible to me as a student with learning differences and learning disabilities and the functions and how I've made Notability work for my specific profile as a student. So the first thing you're going to do is need to see if the professor has slides. I like to take my notes directly on the slide. So if you think about it in a classroom, normally you're sitting there as a student and the professor has slides up or they're talking and they expect you to write down everything on those slides, right? Because those slides are the bits, important information that they've deemed important from the chapter or the subject that you're learning. And then you're expected to take those and copy them down onto your own notes so you can have them. However, I've never been able to keep up. That's so much writing, you have to do it so fast. I can't keep up with the professor. And sometimes professors can talk really fast because they're getting a lot of information within to a short period of time. And so by having the slides, and then also, sorry, sidetrack. Also, it's not only that they've picked the most important information, but then you as a student are also meant to be able to pick even more important information. So maybe you don't have to copy down all the slides, but how are you meant to determine that within two seconds when you're so occupied with writing down the information, you have to then decide what's important and not important at the same time. That's so many functions your brain's doing and my brain does not function that fast. I can't copy down slides perfectly, but also pick out perfect information and <coughs> excuse me, pick down perfect information and then also somehow magically learn. <laughs> Your brain's doing too many functions, that's so much. And by having the slides, I'm cutting out so much of that tobacco and I, I, I can't, it's too much. For neurotypical brains, that's too much and students get overwhelmed and miss information. So how are students with learning disabilities meant to do it? I, I don't understand, but some workarounds is by having the slides to take notes on. So the first thing you're gonna do is you have to download the slides, right? 
So for me personally, um, Curry College uses Canvas as its management program for all classes. And so what I'm gonna do is just go in. This is um, my senior seminar class with Sarah Augusto, who's given me permission to use her slides. Her management program you have um, on iPads specifically, you have this little download button, which you have on also iPhones and a lot of other things. It's like the box with the arrow and you'll click on it and then you'll click on Notability and you'll download the slides like that and you'll click a new one and then it will just pop up. You can click and then you can click what subject you want it in and then you just click import and then it will pop up in Notability. So once you've done that, it will go in Notability within your subject or just within general notes and you can access it. I like to do this either right before class or um, maybe the day before. I do not like to do it in advance though because sometimes professors change their slides like the night before um, or we didn't cover enough information so they're last week so they're adding more slides to this week. So I would be careful about downloading all of them at once. I would kind of do it as you go. But once you've downloaded them, it titles it the, itself, but you can also retitle it. I don't bother because it makes sense to me. It's week 11 and 12, fall 2021. So I wanna talk about some of the functions Notability has and why I like it so much. So one thing you just saw me do with my fingers, you can make the slides bigger and smaller just by pinching. So that's all I'm doing is just pinching. Um, I also really like the function. Notability is something that you pair with an Apple Pencil. So you do have an Apple Pencil. Um, and by the way, I'm working on a MacBook Pro 4, I believe. So right at the top, you have all of your functions, right? You've got text, so you can make a little text box and type. If you prefer, you can have the pen function, which has different thickness, which I really like, and a ton of different colors. You can make your own colors as well. And you can do underlines with little dots or break apart, or you can do thickness, just normal, or you can do where like it gets thicker, the harder you press. I just like normal. You also have all these functions under the highlights. I love this highlight function because you can just highlight as you'll see, I use it a lot. And once again, you have all the colors you could ever want and sizing that you'd like. The next is the eraser function, which is right here. And this just erases stuff, so I'll demonstrate. And then you just click on it and it erases. I like that you don't have to, you just have to touch whatever it is. You don't have to like fully erase. So it also makes it less work. If you have something written down, you can do this little, I don't even know what to call it, cut and paste tool almost. So where you go around whatever you've written and it starts moving, you can cut and paste it, you can duplicate it, you can make it bigger, smaller, it just makes it a movable image. You can also delete it. Then you've got the touch function. This means that you're not in writing mode. So if you use your fingers or if you're, um, you have your Apple Pencil, when you touch things, you won't accidentally write on something. This is if you're using this to present, you could use a laser to highlight things if you're trying to explain something to someone else. So like, this is what I want people to look at, look at poverty, look at inequality, and then it fades. So that's more if you're demonstrating something to someone. I use these three the most. The other big thing I love about Notability it's not only that I can choose colors and sizes and all that can be determined by me and edited by me, but that I can also record my lectures. A lot of students with learning disabilities have the accommodation to record their lectures, 
which can be so helpful. It's only audio recording, so the teacher is not being recorded like their face or anyone else in the class. But by auto recording, if you zone out because you have ADHD and your brain goes on a tangent, ADD or ADHD, or if you get really distracted in class, or you know it's a really early morning class and you're super sleepy, or whatever, you're too focused on taking notes and you miss information, recording it can have you go back and listen to the information you missed. So you don't have to miss critical information. You can go back and listen to the recording. So by doing that, you can see it has this little microphone and you just click the microphone if you want it to record. It will look like that when it's recording. Or when you click down, you can see that it has play, you can click the speed, go forward 10 seconds, back 10 seconds. You can also export this audio if you need to. Voice boost, you can amplify it from a distance. I have mine pretty high since professors tend to be pretty far away. This is where you can see the different types of recording. You can edit the recording. Um, you can select it to import it, anything like that delete it, whatever you need. By having the recorded court recording directly on slides, it really helps me not lose information and it pairs the slides up with the information, with the audio at the same time, which I will demonstrate for you now. So a couple of things about these slides and then I'll demonstrate how I use the audio and actually take notes directly onto the slide. A big thing about slides that you can do to make them more accessible is have a plain background. White or maybe a light gray if you need to, but having a really plain background. So if people wanna take notes on the slides, their notes pop up and it's also not too distracting. You can see the words clearly and it makes it great. Um, something I like that um, this these slides are from Dr. Sarah Augusto who is a sociology professor who's given us permission for me to use these during um, my presentations is that she has that white background. She has her wording very big and bolded for titles. And when she has an image, it's either on a slide by itself or with a little bit of information versus having an image with a ton of information where the information gets too small or it's too busy. And she doesn't have slides and images on top of each other. So if you have this really cool effect where you have some words and then you click a button and an image pops up over the words or next to the words, when you download slides, it doesn't do that function. It just finishes the slides. So you'll end up missing the words or some of the information. So by just having things on different slides, when you download it, it makes it a much cleaner download. So some of the ways I use my notes. Something you'll notice in all of my notes is I have this little, I it's like an X kind of shape at the top right of each slide. That is to mark when each slide starts and stops in my recording. So when I click this little down button, the recording comes up, you'll see that a lot of my slides, all the markings I've made kind of fade out because I haven't written them yet. You'll see that some of them haven't. That's because with the blue color, I was studying from an exam. So I highlighted everything in blue, which was after the recording. So if I play the recording. Everything else about your life is provide for their basic needs. So the most you'll see that as the recording goes, right is things are highlighting right, in would be because at this recording center, point, right? this is what I'm writing it. So I can see exactly what I wrote when she said that. And it's paired up together versus recording in some other device and taking notes here. And then you personally having to try to find the right part in the recording to fit that note. I can just go down and let's see, you see that little dot, if I click on it, uh, when we talked you'll about see the recording theory, jumped. Uh, I'll do it again. Ago. So the recording was so right the here. Again are the I'll go down a little bit. A find another highlight. Click on it. Damage, their and it jumped right? again. 
it lines it up perfectly. I don't have to worry about going through an hour's recording to try to find this one piece of information. I can just go to the slide, click on it, and it will be right there. I use mainly highlights in my note taking because it's so simple. This is the keyword. This is what I need. She has a lot of her main concepts are bolded so it makes it even easier to find and I add an extra layer of highlighting and then I'll highlight the big things so mode of production economic function of a society is like the big concept that I wanted to remember i.e capitalism so I sometimes do have written notes like this and I'll have details like this economic base but for the most part, I do use highlighting. If we go down a couple of slides, you'll see meritocracy that I wrote some more information. Maybe the slide she added later, or maybe she just talked about it and put it on the whiteboard. You can add a blank sheet within a slide. You just go You just go to this little double paper thing and this will pop up and then you go to these three little dots and you click on it and it says add a page and I added a page where I can take more notes. You can also clear the page, delete it, copy it, whatever you want. So this is kind of how I use Notability. Another function I love of Notability and what makes it so diverse is that these three little dots you can go here, go to templates. You can pick what you want your pages to look like. Well, you want them lines, you want them grid, dots. And then they have a ton of templates. They've got recipe, they've got recipe, they've got a music page. They've got even like football and soccer and basketball sheets. Goal tracker, which is really great. Financial tracker, meal plan a ton of different templates that you can also use. It doesn't just have to be for your notes. I also use this for my organization and planning my weeks. This is why Notability is so amazing. I really, I love Notability so much. Um, you can also add images into Notability. So if the professor has something in person or wrote something on the board, you can take a photo of that by going to camera, take a photo of it. I'll just, take a screen grab of that, use, and the photo ends up right there. And you can just import it super easily. You can also Input a photo you've already taken or scan a document or a web clip, stickers, anything like that that you need. It has, it's super adaptable to what you need. There's so many function, which really makes Notability amazing. So this is some of the ways I've used Notability. I think my biggest takeaways that I'd want you guys to have from this is that everything can be adapted to fit a student's needs. You just have to see it from a different angle. There's so many ways to go around things or problem solve that students don't have to struggle in class. There's tools, there's amazing things. I think the other thing I'd love for people to be more aware of is being mindful of your slides. People don't necessarily think about how slides can be accommodating but make sure the background's not too complicated. Make sure you don't have too much on your slides, too many images with words and it's too complicated, it's hard. Simplify them. Make sure that the information they need is there, but also that is accessible to them. And this is some things you can do in class to make it easier for students who struggle. And it's not that hard. It probably would be less work for professors because they wouldn't have to do so much on their slides. Um, so these are just some of the things I really love about Notability and how I use it to fit my profile and what I do in class. 
Um, and some of the functions and how I've made nobility adapt to me. I hope this was helpful. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I love notability. I love talking about notability. Um, and I use it in every single one of my classes. <laughs>